Well, hello, and welcome to Stop, Let's Team Up, My Legion Adventure, episode 27. And we are up to Adventure Comics 311, and it is another Legion of Substitute Hero story. Woohoo! So, let's get some of the basic stuff out of the way. Adventure Comics, number 311, cover date, August 1963. Uh, cover credits, Kurt Swan, penciler, George Klein, inker, woohoo, um, Letter, Irish Hop, it's a wonderful, uh, the Legion of Superhero Story gets the cover. It is the Legion of Substitute Heroes looking at a board with Superboy, Shrinking Violet, Cosmic Boy, and some of the others. And Polar Boy saying, as leader of the Legion of Substitute Heroes, Polar Boy, I accuse these superheroes of plotting to conquer the Earth. I vote we battle them to a showdown. So, um, the first story in this issue is the Legion story. It's a two-parter. Um... The first, it's the war between the Legion, I'm sorry, the war between the substitute heroes and the Legionnaires, and part two is called The Duel of the Legions, and the credits are the story of Mort Weisinger, Edmund Hamilton, um, Mort Weisinger, um, editor, plotter, plotter, scripter, Edmund Hamilton, penciler, inker, John Forte, letterers, John Letteris and Milton Snappen, part two only. Uh, roll call for the Legion of Superheroes is Cosmic Boy, Saturn Girl, Chameleon Boy, Brainiac 5, Sun Boy, and Bouncing Boy. The lineup for the Legion of Substitute Heroes is Polar Boy, Night Girl, Stone Boy, Fire Lad, Chlorophyll Kid. Um, then their cameo appearances by Colossal Boy, Element Lad, Invisible Kid, Lightning Lass, Star Boy, Super Boy, Triplica Girl, and Ultra Boy. And now the, syn the little synopsis in the amazing um, Legion of Superheroes Index is... While the Legion is called into space, the Legion of Substitute Heroes deals with a mining machine meant to sh strip the Earth of its rare ores. However, instead of being grateful upon their return, the Legionnaires direct the Substitutes to disband and then attack them when they do not comply. The Substitutes correctly deduce that the Legionnaires are actually alien imp imposters who have imprisoned the real Legionnaires and taken their places. They expose the aliens and free the Legion without the later's knowledge, the substitutes choosing to continue to operate secretly. Um, the aliens are called the Zizanians. Zizanians, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Z-Y-Z-A-N-I-A-N-S. Uh, this is a cute little Silver Age story. Uh, it is not mind-altering or mind-blowing. I do really enjoy it because I like, I'm a fan of the Legion of Super, uh, Substitute Heroes. I'm always happy to see them. Um, um, it's just a neat gimmick character. I don't want to say that, a gimmick character, but, yeah, you know, it's a neat change of pace uh, in Legion stories. It breaks it up, and it tells the stories from someone else's point of view, and I like that. Um, I, um, and it's a lot of fun. I, I like the John Forte art. I'm still continuing to like it. It is it's a little stiffer, I think, in some of this. There's a lot of the sitting and the standing straight as a board in a line. But we get to see a little back, um, backstory, uh, not a backstory, some, there's some of that l slow continuity build that I like as a Legion fan. Um, uh, it's Night Girl is falling in love. You see that on page three where she is, um, she's got a, photos of her, of him in a locker, a helmet he once wore in the anti-gravity belt. Um, uh, the kind of like on page two where you see, um, um, some of the, you know, I like how they, because they, they say it's a future, they do future explaining of different things. Like, Santa Girl's looking in front of a time mirror and seeing herself in the future, and it's her with glasses on. Um, and then there's a plant from Hyrax where an animal will bloom from it. You know, stuff like that. Uh, the substitute uh, legionnaires live in um, uh, a tunnel. But then when the, the what's great is, is it's the crazy space machines. They start showing up in page three and the substitute legion uh, battle the one uh, that sent there first and then they get the message from who they think is sun boy um and it's a nice little story i mean it's got a great cliffhanger it's you know them traveling away in a rocket ship um there's a force vortex machine it crashes their uh hideout um and then in part two you get more machines on Another on a barren moon, and you find all this stuff going on. I like Forte's um, crazy machines. I think they're a lot of fun. Um, 
There's a centipede one that's red and white, which is kind of cool and groovy. Um, I think these aliens come back in the Levitz era. Because, well, okay, I'm sorry. I just flipped the page and saw them. But there's just a lot of great stuff in it. It's just basic fun. It is very John Forte, people standing straight as a board. The, the aliens are these, like, lizard creature kind of guys. And I'm going to, I will, um, I'm pretty sure they appear in Levitz several times. When they come back, I will, I hopefully will remember. But it's a lot of fun. I want to say something about Forte's art. Uh, something that I like is that his faces are becoming, and, and I think Swan does this a great deal in uh, his Legion, is everybody has a very specific face. And I, and I think some comic artists struggle with it. There's some greats that had uh, troubles with it that I noticed. Um, I think... John Byrne had a little bit. He was pretty good. But people had a like a girl, a woman's face, and they just drew it on different women to, to a point. I don't know. But I'm really, I'm really digging that. Uh, the personality. They've got expression. It works. This is a fun little comic. It's worth 20 minutes to your read. Uh, we're moving along. Uh, I hope you're enjoying these little quick reviews that aren't, aren't too long. Some of these stories are just a little, just a little bit of... A little bit of fun in the middle of your day. It's a great read. And if you're reading along, I hope you enjoyed it. I'd like to know what you think. And um, if you're reading along or reading ahead, um, let me know what you think about the next one. Because the next issue is a big issue. It's Adventure 312. And it's called The Super Sacrifice of the Legionnaires. And it is a comic. When my brother got a back issue of it, we both read it. Just kept taking turns reading it. It is um, a big deal. It's the cover page. It's the cover issue. I don't want to spoil the... I mean, the book is 60 years old. I mean, I'm going to... Spoilers. But, if you know, it is an important book. It's a return... I'm just going to give it up. It's a return of Lightning Lad. It's a great story. Um, and it's going to be a blast to talk about it. And I can't wait to reread it. And I'll probably do that this weekend a couple of times. Because it's always a great read. Um, and I'll be a little more detailed on that one. Because it is such an important comic. Um, well, that's it. Thank you for your wait. I was had the privilege of interviewing a comic um, professional from. Um, well, he was a, he wrote a, he's written a lot of comics over a lot of years, and he wrote some very comics that were very special to me. And I wanted to have a little quick chat with him, and he was very gracious and agreed. And that'll be going up Saturday. I'll be editing that maybe later tonight tomorrow. Uh, I may be going out of town to see my podcasting partner Vic, my best friend in the whole world. Um, uh, for the first time in visiting her place since pre-pandemic, which will be a lot of fun. Um, but tomorrow I will record and post another podcast, um, those Daring Defenders with my next Defender read, and the interview that I recorded yesterday should drop Saturday or Sunday. Okay, so folks, um, I had a real rough day. Yesterday was a little rough for me, and this was a good cheer up, and that's what comics should be. So do me a favor, be safe, be smart, and read some comics.